Revelation 7 verses 2 and 3. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now, what is the seal? This is the question that I've been getting asked lately. What is this seal? Well, in order for us to answer this question, I got to take you guys to a little bit of a maze because there's a lot of branches and it's interlocking. There's a lot of interlocking branches. So follow me. We'll actually follow Christ. But in this Bible study, in this particular video, you guys are going to have to follow me. Right. In Ephesians 4, in Ephesians 4, verse 30, Paul says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So do not grieve the Holy Spirit. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit, so we shouldn't grieve Him. Right? The word that Paul used for grieve is the Greek word lupeo. Lupeo. To make one sorrowful. So how do we make the Holy Spirit sorrowful? There must be some kind of interaction between us and the Holy Spirit if we are able to cause him, to cause the Holy Spirit to grieve or be sorrowful, right? In John 15, verse 26, Jesus says, When the Comforter, that's the Holy Spirit, when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. He shall testify of me of me. This is Jesus speaking. So when the Holy Spirit comes, the Spirit of truth, he will testify of Jesus Christ. How? What is he going to say? Usually when someone testifies of something or someone, they use a testimony, right? Because you are testifying, you're going to have to use a testimony. A testimony is a, a written or a statement, a verbal truth about someone or something. So we know that Jesus is also God, right? If you are in doubt, notice Hebrews 1 and verse 8, talking about God the Father. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So Jesus is also God. The Father calls him, he says, Thy throne, O God. The Father calls Jesus God. So we need to figure out what his testimony is because his testimony is what the Holy Spirit is going to use to testify of him. So we're going to notice that he has three, three testimonies and they all tie together. Now remember in Exodus 25 verses 8 and 9, God told Moses about Israel. He said, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. So the tabernacle here on earth, the temple that Moses built here on earth, was just a copy of the real tabernacle and the temple that God showed him. In Hebrews 9, Paul talks about the tabernacle and the temple that Moses built here on earth. Remember, only the high priest can enter into the most holy place. And Jesus is now our high priest. Paul says in Hebrews 9 and verse 24, for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. That's the tabernacle that Moses and Israel made. Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are, are, which are the figures of the true. So the temple and the tabernacle that Moses and Israel built are just figures of the true. So that means from the courtyard to the sanctuary to the Ark of the Testimony, those were just a copy of the true which is in heaven. How do we know it's in heaven? You don't believe me, right? You don't believe me that there's a temple in heaven. Check out what John saw in heaven. Revelation 11 and verse 19. And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, the ark of God's testament, the ark of God's testament. Testament. What is that? A testimony. Let's focus on the ark really quick. The ark that Moses built that was in the temple here on earth was a copy of the ark in the temple of God in heaven. Now what's in the ark? His what? His testimony. It's his, it's the ark of his testament. So what's in there? His testimony. 
Exodus 25 and verse 16, God talking to Moses, and thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. What is this testimony? Exodus 31 verse 18, And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Now, what is this testimony? What was, what was, the, what was the thing that God wrote on two tables of stone? The Ten Commandments. This is God's testimony. And Jesus is God, right? So this is God's testimony. This is the testimony of Jesus Christ. God told Moses to put his testimony, the Ten Commandments, in the Ark of the Testimony. We know that it is his testimony because up in heaven, he calls it the Ark of his Testament. So the Ten Commandments is God's testimony and it is Christ's testimony as well because he is God. Now remember in John 15 verse 26, Jesus says, When the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Now what, is, what testimony is he going to use to testify of Jesus Christ? The testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the Ten Commandments. Ah, no wonder. No wonder why later on in John 16 and verse 7, Jesus says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Verse 8, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He will reprove the world of sin. When the Holy Spirit comes, He will reprove or convict the world of sin. Now, what is sin? 1 John 4, 3. Sin is the transgression of the law, the Ten Commandments. So when the Holy Spirit comes, He will convict you of sin. And how is He going to convict you of sin? He will testify of Jesus Christ using the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the Ten Commandments, because how on earth can you be convicted of sin if you do not know the Ten Commandments? How on earth are you going to be convicted of sin if you don't know the law? That is why the testimony of Jesus Christ, the Ten Commandments, are what it, it's what the Holy Spirit is going to use to testify of Him. Because He's going to use it to convict you of sin. He's going to use it to tell you, hey, you're a sinner. Sin is the transgression of the law. That's how it works. Remember in John 5, when the Jews were trying to accuse Jesus of breaking the Sabbath, He says thus to them. John 5 verse 39, Search the Scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. That's testimony number two. Testimony number one, the Ten Commandments. Testimony number two, the Scriptures. The Scriptures testify of Jesus Christ. Now back then, they only had the Old Testament. Jesus was saying the entire Old Testament testifies of him what is what was the main thing in the old testament what was mainly in the old testament the law and the prophecies of jesus christ the killing of bulls and lambs the prophecy that jesus had to come and be the sacrifice for us the substance to the shadow everything in the old testament was about jesus christ and him being sacrificed adam and eve sinned and they made aprons for themselves. And then God came down and said, Get those aprons out of here. I will make you coats of skin. Now, how did God make coats of skin? There must have been an animal sacrifice. There must have been a sacrifice for God to make coats of skin. Cain and Abel, was there a sacrifice? Yes, there was a sacrifice. Abraham, his son, was the sacrifice. But then God stopped him and from sacrificing his son and then provided a ram that was in the bush. That was the sacrifice. Elijah sacrificed a bullock and then fire came down to devour the sacrifice. Samson sacrificed himself to save Israel. The entire sanctuary service was about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So the entire Old Testament testifies of Jesus Christ as the sacrifice. And it is because we are a sinful world that He had to sacrifice Himself for us. When we understand this, it will lead us to repentance, which means to change your mind or to reverse your thinking or to turn away from your sins. It means to stop doing it. 
It means to stop sinning. This is the second testimony that we are sinners and Jesus died for us, so we should repent of our sins. The entire Bible testifies of this. Revelation 19 verse 10, John talking about the angel. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Testimony number three, the spirit of prophecy. What is prophecy? What, what prophecy is left to be fulfilled? There are many prophecies to yet be fulfilled, but the two main prophecies left to be fulfilled is the mark of the beast and the wonderful prophecy that Jesus will come to take us home. So what are the three testimonies? Let's say it like this. Number one, we are lawbreakers. We are sinners, punishable by death. But the good news is Jesus died for us. What is that? That is justification. Number two, because Jesus died for us, it should lead us to, the, to repentance. That means turn away from your sins. That means stop breaking the Ten Commandments. Now remember, Jesus said in John 17, verse 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And Psalms 119, verse 142 says, Thy law is the truth. So when we keep the Ten Commandments, that is sanctification. Testimony number three, the prophecy that Jesus will come to take us home to heaven. That is what? That is glorification. So testimony number one, justification. Testimony number two, sanctification. And testimony number three, glorification. That's the whole plan of salvation right there. So when the Holy Spirit comes to you, He will convict you of sin. He will convict you. He, he, will t he will tell you that you are a convict. You broke the law. You deserve to die. But Jesus died for you. So repent and turn away from your sins. Stop doing it. Stop sinning. Keep the Ten Commandments and faithfully await the second coming of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. So when the Holy Spirit comes to you, He will preach to you the gospel justification, sanctification, and glorification. That's the gospel right there. The central theme is that the Holy Spirit will lead you to the obedience of God's law, the Ten Commandments, all ten, not nine, not eight, all ten commandments. If you don't accept this testimony, if you don't turn away from your sin and obey God's Ten Commandments, you have just rejected the Holy Spirit. And if you do that, you have just made the Holy Spirit sorrowful. You have just grieved the Holy Spirit when you don't repent. Why? James 2 and verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead. Uh, the body without the spirit is dead. You know why people grieve? People grieve when their loved ones die. If you reject the Holy Spirit's counsel to repent and obey God's law, then you are as good as dead. And that is why He is grieving. The Holy Spirit is grieving for you because you are rejecting the one that can give you life. So this is the job of the Holy Spirit. His job is to lead you to obedience, the obedience of God's law, the obedience of God's Ten Commandments. So back to Ephesians 4 and verse 30. Paul says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. If we are sealed by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's job is to lead us to obedience of the Ten Commandments, then are the Ten Commandments the actual seal? Revelation 7, verse 2 and 3, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now the Greek word that John used for seal was the word sphragis. I don't know how to say it but it means a signet or a signature, an impressed stamp, a mark of genuineness. In Hebrew, it is the word katam. I don't know how to say that word either. It means to seal up, to close, or to secure. God will secure His people using His signature or His seal. 
You see, back in the olden times, when a king writes up a scroll, he rolls it up, he rolls the scroll up and secures it with a seal, a king's seal. The king's seal contains three things, his name, his title, and his territory. For example, let's say you find a very important scroll from Cyrus, king of Persia, that contains some very important written documents. You would know who that scroll belongs to by noticing the seal. It would say Cyrus, king of Persia. If you only saw the name Cyrus on the seal, then it would be just some random scroll. It could belong to any Cyrus, right? But if the seal said Cyrus, king of Persia, you would realize that this isn't just some random scroll. It would narrow the owner down to one person and one person only. Make no mistakes about it. This scroll belongs to the king, right? So God's seal must have his name, his title, and his territory. Where in the Bible can we find this? I'll give you guys a hint. He writes it with his own finger. Exodus 20 verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that is a Gentile, nor the Gentile that is within thy gates. Why? Why, why should we do this, God? Why should we keep the Sabbath, God? Verse 11, because in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Let's read that one more time. For in six days the Lord, who is that? That's God's name. The Lord made, what does that mean? Created. That is his title, creator. The Lord made made or the Lord created, what is his, what did he create? Heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. That is his territory. Heaven, earth, sea, and all that are in them. That's his territory. So within the Sabbath commandment, you find God's name, God's title as creator, and his territory. Heaven, earth, the sea, and all that are in them. It has all the characteristics of a seal. It has all the characteristics of a king's seal. You want to know why this is important? Because by keeping the Sabbath, we are acknowledging that everything belongs to God. The heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that are in them. They belong to God. And we acknowledge this fact by keeping the Sabbath. And by keeping the Sabbath, we are saying, make no mistakes about it. God owns the universe. God owns this place and God owns us. And if you do that, you are acknowledging that you belong to God. This is why God says in Ezekiel 20 verses 12 and 20, Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. And verse 20, hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. So by keeping the Sabbath, we are acknowledging that God is the Lord our God. And no, it isn't just for Israel or for the Jews, because in Romans 2, I believe, Paul explains, you are not a Jew outwardly, but you are a, a Jew inwardly when you get baptized and when you keep the Ten Commandments of God. Plus, there is nowhere in the Bible that states the Sabbath is only for the Jews. You cannot find it anywhere. But you can find where Jesus says that the Sabbath was made for man. Not just the Jew, man. So the seal of God is the Sabbath, but it isn't just the Sabbath because... That commandment is connected to the rest of the commandments. James says in chapter 2 and verse 10, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So if you break even one commandment, you are guilty of all of them. The seal of God is the Sabbath along with the rest of the Ten Commandments. Along with the rest of the commandments. Isaiah 8 and verse 16 says, Bind up the testimony. What is the testimony? 
the Ten Commandments. So bind up the testimony or bind up the Ten Commandments. Seal the law among my disciples, God says. So this is why in the end we will be sealed by the Holy Spirit because he will convict us of sin, that we are breakers of the law, but will testify that Jesus died for us in our place and will advise us to repent and stop sinning and lead us to the obedience of God's Ten Commandments, sealing us unto the day of redemption when Jesus comes to take us home. And this is why the angel said in Revelation 14 and verse 12, right when Jesus returns, here are the patience of the saints. Here are they who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. If you guys were blessed by this Bible study, please share it to your friends, your family, your relatives, your co-workers. And if you guys want more future Bible studies like this one, subscribe and make sure you guys hit the bell. And also you guys can help us reach more people with these Bible study videos by donating. Link is in the description box. We will use the donation money to advertise these Bible study videos so we can reach more people with the gospel. Thank you guys very much and praise God always.